Hey guys, remember me? It's Florentine Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah, that's right, we're old friends. Anyway, I do want to come out and say I apologize for the uh, month and a half long hiatus. It's really all I can say about it is things got complicated around the house and I was basically unable to record. Basically because I had company over for a month and a half and no space to record. Uh, and locals, I really just kind of felt, I kind of put Yu-Gi-Oh! on the back burner, and I wasn't really going to locals to get footage there either, so. Yeah, what can you do really when you've got company over for a month and a half and can't really have any space to play the game? Anyway, um, so we're going to be coming back at you with a deck profile, a newly completed deck. Uh, it's my favorite deck to play right now. It's not the Ori Calcos, but don't worry, that'll be coming up. Um... So, and I, um, yeah, so it's not Ori Calcos, but it is my favorite legal deck to play right now. It's, in fact, my only legal deck right now. Um, so let's get right to it. It is Time Lords, yeah, um, Z1s, or Zones, uh, archetype from 5Ds. Finally, we got all the cards for them, so I was able to perfect the deck. Um, it's a good fun deck. It's not, like, tier 1 or whatever, but... It can get the job done. Um, you just got to know how to play them. Uh, it's more of a slow, painful burn type of stun deck. Um, I would I would call it. But yeah, this is the Time Lords, and let's get into it. So this is my build of Time Lords. I basically looked at a bunch of various lists from the internet and kind of compiled them together, and kind of built what I wanted to play using them as using like Sam, Team Sam's list as like a building block and a few other lists out there so um yeah uh, so this is not just a pure net deck this is actually my own thing so so we play uh, two Zafion one of the best time lords she basically just erases your opponent's back row and when she sent from the fields of the graveyard to draw a card so all the Time Lords have the effect where they cannot be destroyed by battle or card effects and you can normal summon them without tributes if you control no monsters. Uh, and during your next standby phase they go back to the deck. And then they all have a battle effect where it activates at the end of the battle phase in which they attacked or were attacked. Doesn't matter if it's directly attacking a monster um, or being attacked, it, it goes off if they battle some in some form. Um, they also, also the controller of the Time Lord does not take any battle damage from battles involving them, which is really good because they all have like zero attack except for one of them. Um, so yeah, Zafion is really good, it just erases your opponent's back row, which is very useful. We play two, um, so, because it's one of the best ones. I'm, I'm actually not playing three of any of the Time Lord cards just because they can get kind of clog at three. You want like the right one for the right situation. You don't want too many of one kind. So, uh, two Zafion to start off with Time Lords. And then our next Time Lord is Mataion, the first Time Lord ever made for the official, for the actual game. Um, he's really good. He wipes the board, uh, bounces everything but himself back to the hand, uh, all monsters, and then burns your opponent 300 for each. So, that's really good. And again, can't be just all, all the time lords also can't be special summoned from the deck, which is pretty irrelevant because um, you have cards like you have the trap support and time maiden which ignore that condition, so that's really good. I think they only put that in here so you couldn't like special summon him with things like Mother Grizzly for the water one and so on. But anyway, we got um, two Matayon, and we're playing one Camion. This one's really good, but. Um, you're usually looking for mass removal rather than singular removal. So what this one does is, is he shuffles one card my opponent controls into the deck and then burns for 500. And um, neither player can respond to that effect and it does not target, which is incredibly helpful. Uh, next up we play one Lazion. Uh, this is where the burn where the burn really starts to come down because um, once per turn when your opponent draws a card, uh, they take a thousand damage. So basically, you just summon this, pass, draw. They draw, they take a thousand. Or if they have something that draws during your turn, they take another thousand because it's a, it's a soft, it's once per turn. Um, and his battle effect is that when after he battles or at the end of the battle phase in which he does so, he shuffles my entire op gra opponent's graveyard 
uh, back into the deck, which is very helpful against certain strategies. Um, and just if you have something that they they have in the graveyard that you don't want coming back, um, you just put it back in the deck. The biggest weakness of Time Lords is that they actually have to successfully attack to get their effect to get their best effects off. That's really the biggest downside. And usually you can only have one on the field at a time. There are ways around that though. But anyway, we got uh, the other one of the best Time Lords, Mikayan. I'm surprised they kept this guy's full anime effect intact. Because at the end of the battle phase in which this guy battles, you just straight up have your opponent's life points. It's hilarious. I've um uh, I've gotten so many people mad at me when this thing resolves. They're like, wait, that does what? Is what they basically say. Um, so yeah, two, uh, Mikayan. Then we play two, Sendion. Um, this is the, uh, odd one out because he has 4,000 attack and defense. And you can only normal summon him without tributes when your opponent has a monster and you have none. But... There's a big payoff for that. First off, you got the 4,000 attack that can run over pretty much anything. And then, he doesn't do damage through his attack uh, to the opponent. In fact, neither player takes damage involving from battles involving him. But at the end of the battle phase in which he battles, he does burn your opponent for 2,000. And you can only have one of these face up on the field at a time, though. So you can't just go Sendion, uh, Celestial Transformation for another Sendion, and burn for 4,000. But you can burn for 6,000 by getting both... Uh, one of these and Mikayan on the field, and that's really a good opening uh, opening play. By the way, I mentioned this, your battle phase is very important for this deck, so this is a going. This is pretty much a hard going second deck, uh, just because you really need that battle phase in order to resolve these guys' effects. Uh, then our last Time Lord is Raphion. Uh, this is basically like Elemental Hero Flame Wingman. He um he burns your opponent for the damage, uh, the attack of the monster he battled at the end of the battle phase. So, yeah, one Raphion, just more burn. Uh, then we've got the best card in the deck. We have three Time Maiden, uh, mandatory for any Time Lord deck. This thing has so many effects wrapped into one, it's basically the whole archetype support in one card. So, you can special summon this thing from your hand when you control no monsters. You can tribute it to add a Time Lord with zero attack from your deck to your hand. It can be treated as two tributes for the tribute summon of a Time Lord while it's face up on the field. And um, if you haven't special summoned any other monsters this turn, you can banish this card from your graveyard to special summon a Time Lord with zero attack from your deck, ignoring its summoning conditions. So that's like so many good effects wrapped into one, you just have to play three. You know, it's just amazing it really gets the deck going and most of the deck is uh, most of the spell uh, some of the spell lineup is actually just to get this thing out as fast as possible like you play cards like foolish burial and one for one just because it's a one star and you just pitch it to get the banish effect which is really good uh, for hand traps we have three ashes um, I'd honestly rather be playing drolls right now I just don't own any um, so ash is the next best thing but it's still a good card uh, then we're playing Double Ghost Reaper and Winter Chase. Yeah, Reaper in the main deck seems pretty weird, but you really don't make anything. You really don't make any extra deck monsters with this deck except for one. Um, so two Reaper. I decided two instead of three just in case I go up against something that I don't have covered in my extra deck. So some just something oddball, you know, because my extra deck is Reaper, Reaper line lined for Reaper targets for the meta. Um, so yeah, only two Reaper. Uh, and that's all the monsters. Now for the spells. Oh, we got Foolish Burial and One for One, like I mentioned, to get access to Time Maiden out of your deck. Uh, then we play three uh, Celestial Transformation. Uh, this is another one of the conditions where you can actually have more than one Time Lord on the field because you can. Because what this card does is a quick play. I use this over Valhalla because of the fact that it's a quick play and its downside literally does nothing to you. So when you activate this, you. um. Special summon a fairy type monster from your hand, and its monster its attack is half, which doesn't matter because most of the time lords are zero. You'll probably have Sandion with two thousand. That's like the only downside to playing this card. Um, but the fact that it's a quick play is is much better over Valhalla anyway. Um, and it's destroyed during the end phase. Uh, time lords can't be destroyed by card effects, including your own. So. That so yeah, like I said, just uh, the fact that time you're summoning a time lord with this completely mitigates the downsides. Um, we're playing two duality. 
Uh, only two because I I was playing three, but I found out that I would always either get a duality or a celestial transformation, and I really, really wasn't sure what the better play was. Um, because I could actually, um, I wouldn't know if I would be able to go further with the duality digging into my deck or uh, be able to establish a better board with Celestial Transformation and two Time Lords in that case. So I cut duality to two uh, just because of the no special summon effect. It's still a good card, but um, it's not, I don't think it's necessary at three um, just because you're running some special summon stuff. Uh, then we play two copies of Advanced Draw. This card's really good because all your monsters are like level 8 and higher. So you just tribute them off to draw 2. And then you um, make sure you have a follow. You always want to make sure. The downside to this is you always want to make sure you have a follow up to tributing off your Time Lord. Whether it be uh, uh, the trap cards or a Celestial Transformation or something like that. Um, that's why I only play 2 because you usually want to have a follow up and. Uh, but tributing this off with Zafion is really good because you tribute Zafion when you activate this to draw two. And then Zafion goes off when it's sent from Fields of Graveyard to draw another. So it's plus one. You know, really good. Advanced draw. Um, some people don't think it's necessary. I personally really like it. Uh, then the one ohms, we've got a Monster Reborn and a Raigeki just because they're generic good cards, essentially. Now for the traps. We're playing three copies of Empty Machine. You have to play three. It's more draws, which is really good. You um, So the first time this face-up card on the field will be destroyed by an opponent's card effect, it does not. And um, once per turn, you can activate one of the following effects. You can either discard a level 10 monster to draw a card, or if you have no other back row, you can shuffle a Time Lord from your uh, graveyard back into your deck and then set infinite machine uh, directly from your hand or deck to your side of the field. So, and these are traps, so they're quick effects too. Uh, so they're inherently quick effects, which is really good because you can you can draw on your opponent's turn, you can set this on your opponent's turn with the the effect of the empty machine. And um, it's just really, it's just, it, it takes a lot of build up these traps and they're inherently slow because they're traps, but the payoff is gihugic if, um, you catch my drift. So we've got uh, what Infinite Machine does. It can only be activated by sending a face-up uh, empty machine from your side of the field to the graveyard. Uh, once per turn, this card cannot be destroyed by car your opponent's card effects. And then during the main phase, either main phase, you can special summon one Time Lord from your hand. That's a quick effect because it's trap. And you and it has the other effect where if you have no other back row, you can shuffle a Time Lord. Uh, from your graveyard into your deck to set an infinite light uh, from your deck or hand directly to your side of the field. And then we have infinite light, which is basically the I win button for this deck because it can't be disturbed by your opponent's card effects. It requires sending an infinite machine from your side of the field to the graveyard to activate. And uh, Time Lord monsters now, in addition to not being uh, destructible by battle or card effects, they also cannot be targeted or returned to the deck, even by their own effects. So your Time Lords stay on the field, and they can't be targeted or destroyed by anything. So that's just really good. Like I said, it, these traps, they take a lot of build-up, but the reward is gigantic. And also, its last effect is, because it's a trap, it's quick, um... When you control no monsters, you can special summon one each from your hand, deck, and graveyard, uh, t one Time Lord each, with different names from those locations, ignoring their summoning conditions to your side of the field. So, like I said, it's basically the I win button, because you get three Time Lords on the field that can't be targeted, destroyed, or, or anything, really, or, or shuffled back in by your opponent's effects or their own effects, which is awesome. So, I like the, um... I like the trap lineup for these. Um, I know they're not really... Some people decide not to run these just because of the fact that they're slow. I feel like the payoff is just big enough to for it to for it to be run, I should say. Um, so yeah, next up for the traps, uh, three Tarantulas. Gotta run three in this deck um, just because you can normal summon a Time Lord and then blow up your opponent's board. The Time Lord doesn't die because of its effects. So yeah, three torrential is uh, torrential just more board control. Really good card. Gen another generic board wipe. If there ever was one. 
Um, then keeping with the theme of cards that have infinite in their name, I guess we got three infinite. Um, sorry, three, two. I can't count today. Uh, two infinite and permanents to round out the traps. This is also with a hand trap. You play a lot of hand traps because this is a going second deck. Infinite and permanents just being able to negate a monster effect uh, when, uh, when you're going second is very helpful. That's really all I got to say about that. So that's all for the main deck. Let's go into the extra deck, which is basically uh, this guy. Uh, Super Dreadnought Cannon, Super Dreadnought Rail Cannon, Gustav Max, more burn, and you can overlay summon him with two Time Lords, which is really good. And that's it for the extra deck. Well, I guess you could say uh, we've got the Sky Strikers, uh, Nightmare, Hextia, Assault, Phoenix, Electromite, just every, every, like, meta relevant extra deck monster for Reaper as well, so. Uh, you never make any of these. You only make this guy. Um, the rest is here for Reaper. That's why I like so much about this deck is that it's just... It's... You can main Reaper, which is really cool. And, um... So, yeah, this is, uh... This is my Time Lord deck. It's my new favorite legal deck to play right now. Um... Just because I really, I really like just stun decks and... I just, it's just something I really enjoy playing, so I thought, why not build it? And I've been, I've been anxiously waiting for the new cards in the Battle of, Battles of Legend, Relentless Event, so I can finally finish the deck. So, um, if you com comment and tell me what you thought, if you have any suggestions for this deck, please let me know. I'm not going to show the side deck because it's pretty generic, and really side decks are all up to personal preference, and what you think you're going to go up against anyway. So I'm not going to show that, but you can expect there's like a third, the third Reaper is in the side deck, basically. So, take of that what you will. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button, comment something what you thought. If you have any suggestions to make this deck better, um, I really want to hear them. And maybe even subscribe if you're new. Anyway, this is Florentine Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, sorry for the hiatus. And all I can say is, um, thanks for sticking with me. See you all next time. Goodbye.